surgeon-driven changes and technology-driven changes. We're all, we're all taken by technology-driven changes. They're really sexy, they're great. Um, but I'd like to concentrate on surgeon-driven changes. And I had to think about the surgeon-driven changes that we've seen that have been really important. This has been one of the most important of the lot, of course. But since capsular excess was invented, I reckon there's top four things that have been from 22 years ago to now, okay? My top four things are FACO chop, 20 years ago. Uh, practice patterns, yeah, look, sculpting's going out, chopping's coming in, this is David Lenning's survey 2013 from the poster. <coughs> Temporal teeth, what are decisions? Well, that's a no-brainer, that's getting more popular. Topical anesthesia, how's that going? Well, at ASCRS members, uh, the, uh, the, the injection anesthesia is nearly gone. But cortical cleaving hydrodissection, what I want to talk about today, was invented by Howard Fine 20 years ago. And he taught me 20 years ago. And, uh, and I find it a fabulous uh, thing. But what I've, what I've realised is it's probably not what most people do. Faust uh, wrote up uh, hydrodissection in 1984. And it was for hydrodissection to dislocate a lens from the bag in extra capsular cataract surgery. But I think, from talking to people, that's probably what most people do now. Why? What is CCH? Well, you can't have missed it. It's been in all the textbooks, every single textbook, and, and Faust hasn't had a, a, anything to say. Howard Fine has written every, every chapter in all of those textbooks. He wrote it up in 1991 first, and then peer review literature in 1992. He and I have been talking about this for years and, and wondered why people don't do it. And he never understood. Richard Hoffman, so, uh, <coughs> part in my world, quotes Howard Fine as saying, this technique is one of the simplest and most powerful methods of adding safety to routine cases, especially challenging eyes with compromised onions. The first time you successfully perform, the, perform it and look down at the pristine capture bag devoid of cortex, without having used the eye or handpiece, it will be difficult to suppress a big smile. What it is, it's simply hydrodelineation is that, hydrodissection is separating the cortex from the epinucleus, and cortical cleaving hydrodissection is simply separating the capsule from the cortex. And simply, when you take the epinucleus out, it just works like this, and the, the cortex comes with it. Very, very satisfying uh, thing to do. And it's not very hard to do. So why bother? Why go to all the trouble? Firstly, safety. It's axiomatic that if you don't do IA, you can't break the capsule during IA. One of the most important things. Second thing is I reckon it reduces the risk of nuclear loss with capture, capture block syndrome. Why is that important? <coughs> Well, um, there's two very famous uh, capsular block syndromes uh, recently uh, that have caused a lot of concern in, in, in laser uh, cataract surgery from Tim Roberts. And what's in common with them? Small capsular excess and large cataract in all, of those in all of those papers. That's what's in common with all of these things. So what happens? Uh, you you hydrodissect, the bag blows up, capsular block, cohesive OVV, and the bag can blow out. Bad complication. Cordial cleaving hydrodissection is different because you, firstly you inject against the anterior capsule and you get a fluid wave backwards and then it goes around the back. Now I've taken a video and I've slowed it down to watch what happens in cordial cleaving hydrodissection. Just watch very carefully. Firstly, uh, that's normal speed. Now 25% speed. Have a look at the anterior fluid wave. You see that, see that there? Then it goes out the incision. And then the hydrodissection starts. Okay, so you can see the fluid leak. You can't see that when you're operating because you're not looking there. And when you look at these, you slow it down. I'll show you again. It's kind of cool. Um, so, firstly, the, you see the fluid wave, anterior fluid wave. It looks like this every time. Fluid goes out the incision, like a, like a pressure valve, and then the hydrodissection happens. Why bother? The surgery is quicker. I've calculated I've had saved 15 weeks of holidays. <laughs> by doing this procedure. It's statistically significantly quicker. It's quicker than when I only hit 25% out. The operation is quicker when you get it all out. Maybe that just means good cases go well. Oh, that's, maybe that's all it means, I don't know. Less extensive PCR, I have a facade has shown that. Um, so what two things can we do to reduce PCO? You know, there aren't very many things, surgical things we can do, okay? We can overlap the rexus, we know that. We can do CCH with tripan blue. That's been shown recently. 
We can do anti-recapsular policy. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. Anti-recapsular policy makes PCA worse, okay? So you mustn't do it. Post-recapsular policy, uh, policy, that's a dumb idea. I mean, the cells on the post-recapsule, you've got to know some histology. There aren't lens epithelial cells there. They're proper lens cells. They can't metaplase in post-recapsular passage. So that one doesn't work either. Less retained cortex is, is, is a good thing too. PCR inflammation and ophthalmitis. But it's the special cases that are important. But you can't just do the special cases. You've got to do them all to be able to get the knack. Okay? Small pupils, poor visibility, zonulopathy, difficult and dangerous cortical aspiration, we know. Um, thirdly, in, uh, the cortical cleaving viscous action, um, uh, Ken Ro Rosen Rosenthal, Ken, what's his name? Rosenthal, talks about cortical cleaving visco dissection in order to get rings and things in without having the cortex underneath it. You don't need the Henderson ring to aspirate the, the cortex out because you put the ring outside the cortex. Um, so the other special case is laser-assisted cataract surgery. Is there an increased risk of capsule, capsule block syndrome? Well, maybe there is. And there's also an increase, typically I'm told, and I've, I've seen it, of cortical aspiration from amputated anterior fibres. They say the cortex is thicker. They say there's fused cortex. I've heard all sorts of ways, things you have to do. Some of those are yours, Michael, and they're just dumb. I mean, you, you can't do... You, I'm not yours. No, 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 sorry. You can't do gentle hydrodissection. You either do it or you don't, you know? And you can't do low-volume hydrodissection. That's, that's nearly as dumb, too. I don't know about that. I don't think you here. Multi-port, oh, that's maybe a good idea. But there is a volume. Now, what is it? It's a perfect storm in, in, in laser cataract surgery, isn't it? It's a perfect storm of small rexes, big lens, and maybe other factors that Michael's alluded to in his paper. So, um, cortical cleaving hydrosection avoids too much volume. There's only 0.4 mils the first pass and 0.2 the second pass. And I spoke to Howard Fine and he, fi he found the same things. It's a small volume. And it avoids cortical aspiration that might be more difficult in laser assisted cataract surgery. Here's a case I'll show you. Um, so, uh, lifting the edge of the capsule, I'll show you how that's done later. You see the, you see the gas bubble move with it, but it's okay. The ring preserves the gas bubble. This is one of those cases that happened to be that didn't come out with the epinucleus, it had to come out separately, and it all just comes out quickly like that. That's, that's a good way to get the cortex out. That's the way I do laser assisted cataract surgery. How do you do it? Okay, if, you, if you're not doing it, maybe may I respectfully show you how I do it. Um, you have to have the right equipment, okay? That's pretty easy. I use the Akahoshi cannula, but the others are good. This is how you do it. You've got to elevate the capsule, not finger off the th thumb off the, off the pedal because you don't want any fluid to go in. And then inj inject near the equator but against the anterior capsule. And then you go to the second point, lift it up, but make sure you don't see a wave because if you get a wave behind the lens, then you've got the wrong, wrong plane. Okay? and push the lens back down again, then rotate it. Notice that the cortex is rotating with the nucleus, okay, and hydrodelineation, okay? That's how you do it. And then to take it out, it's really quite simple. You just do normal epinuclear aspiration, and the cortex comes with it. Now, this one comes right through. So let's go through that. Uh, and some, uh, let's go back. Oh, sorry. Sometimes the cortex comes out separately, and sometimes you've just got to get down and dirty and, uh, and do proper uh, you know, ordinary IA. Okay? How do you do it? Elevate the rexus edge, no fluid injection, thumb off the plunger. Inject 0.4 mils against the anterior capsule, watch for the wave and depress the lens. Observe what I call the fern side. Can you see this? You see that fern kind of look there? You've got, you've got successful cortical cleaver part of the section when you see that. Inject another 0.2 mils and depress the lens. Rotate, observing the cortex moving with the lens. After removal of the nucleus, aspirate the epinucleus in the same way. Any residual cortex, clear cortex might not come. Um, stay with the AC and uh, fake a tip. You stay in the AC and it'll come to you. Don't go into the post edge segment with a fake a tip. It'll just come up. Um, any uncleaved cortex requires IA. How often does it work? Well, I was going to present this in 2003, and I never got around to it, um, but uh, nuclear cataracts do better. Cor cortical's worse because you get these cortical adhesions, and Abba Fasad has written that, written that up in the literature about cortical adhesions and less successful cortical cleaving hydrosection. And PSC never, um, because there's always a little bit of cortex left you've got to IA with PSC. I got one once, I think. Uh, you get most of it, it's still worth doing, but this is only 100% coming out at the time. Uh, am I getting any better at it? I did another audit of 183 cases in August, September 2011. I was going to present again. Yeah, maybe I'm just getting a little bit better at it. In the case, it's indicated whenever hydrodissection is necessary in the presence of a capsular rexus, 
It's contraindicated with a deficient posterior capsule, uh, post-tetrectomy, posterior pulmonary cataract. There's an odd irony, though, I think, though, that, that, uh, that this technology, not surgeons, is going to drive the move to the, my top four uh, surgeon-driven techniques, laser-assisted cataract surgery, topical anesthesia, phaco chop, corneal incisions, and cortical cleaving heart intersection, all perfectly suited to laser-assisted cataract surgery. In conclusion, I don't think there are any indications for Faustian heart intersection in the presence of a capsular erexus. Thanks very much. Does it cause inflammation and does it increase CME, you think? No, no, I don't leave any stuff inside the do no. What happens to the living cells that you leave behind? Or the well, back of the that's interesting. Cancerous? You don't get them by IA, that's for sure. <coughs> Cabo Basavo wrote up a paper where he did quarter the cleaving heart intersection and rotated, the, rotated it several times, presumably to abrade them off, and found he had a lower PCO. Um, but uh, you don't get them with IA. And you don't want to disturb the anterior capsule because they, you get you get hyperplasia of the anterior capsule of, uh, of, the, of the lens epithelial cells. That's why the posterior capsule uh, opacity is worse if you try to affect the anterior capsule. Oh, what, one comment and one question. The comment is if you use the shepherd ring to uh, remove all the lens or majority of the lens epithelial cells from the anterior leaflet. It's been my experience that PCO incidence drops dramatically. I wasn't able to decrease it by IA, but I was able to, to decrease it dramatically by using the Shepherd brain. Um, and then the question is, if you consider this to be such a safer way of uh, doing the procedure, why is it contraindicated in post-retrectomy eyes? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I mean, post-retrectomy eyes where there's a deficient posterior capsule. Yeah. Just like ordinary heart sections where they've chopped okay. a bit out of the back of the capsule. But so, address the anterior capsule issue. Um, there's, a, there's a literature there, and there's experimental stuff of, of organ culture that shows that you get hyperplasia if you try to aspirate them. And the, the menopause's literature shows that, that it's worse. There's only been one study on posterior capsule uh, vacuuming, and that was done for extra capsule surgery, and it showed no difference. No one's ever bothered to do it for phaco modification. But I have no personal experience. Rick, even though you called me dumb on two occasions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? I did deny that. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I think it's actually probably the best talk I've seen in ophthalmology in the last year. Uh, and uh, I'm going to try it. Do you do it? Uh, you put in 0.4 mils in one place only. You're not moving the cannula around? Yes. yes. So you have the fluid that does the work? You don't measure it because you can't. I only did it once and looked at it and see how much it was, and I rang out findings and it was exactly the same. It happens to be 0.4 mils, which you okay. don't put for. And I don't know what ordinary heart intersection is because I don't do it. It's not fair. This is so good, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, um, but, please. In two places, yes. You do it in two places? 180 degrees apart. You don't have to. So you put 0.4 mils and yeah. then another 0.4 mils? Point, it ends up being 0.2 for some reason. Yeah. But the 0.2 is... Different. That's at a different stage. It's, it's, it's after I've after I've done the first wave. Yeah, yeah. Then you go and go in and lift it again, just to, just so that we push the lens down. There's more cleavage of the uh, as the fluid comes up. Uh, you don't have to. I don't always do it, but I think it is better. But you want to make sure you don't see a wave. If you see a wave, then you've got ordinary height of resection, and you'll end up with the, what you saw a whole big flat thing of, of, of cortex that just comes up quickly in, in the phaco tip. So, so the point two, though, you just do 180 degrees away. Yes, yes. But you don't know it's point two. You do it till you see the lens rise okay. and then push it back down. Thanks. Yeah. The important thing is to go peripherally enough, nearly to the equator. You have to see the, the iris elevate a little bit, nearly to the equator, and inject against the anterior capsule. And then it'll work every time in refractive lens exchange. That's what's so beautiful about it, because that's when you never want to bust the capsule. You know? I mean, you never want to anyway. But it'll work every time in that. It'll work every time in a nuclear cataract, even a dense nuclear cataract. But with significant cortical cataract, you'll often have some bits left. You know? um, and posterior subcapsule, the, the posterior subcapsule piece is always attached to some cortex that sometimes you've just got to go and get. But you know, you've got no subincisional cortex to get because you get it with the. And, and it's 83% of the time, it's 100%. I, mean, I didn't make it up, I, I did a proper work. But, but even those that failed, I've still got most of it. I've only got a little AA to do, I can still. 
I ran on this play hard for him and he kind of agreed with me.